What's up, everyone? It's Ryan, um, and I am here because doing a quick video for those who have been reaching out. Uh, it's really great. There seems to be a lot of um, people following their passion projects or getting involved with passion projects. And a couple times this week, believe it or not, um, folks reached out and wanted to learn more about the preamp output that I installed on my Deluxe Reverb uh, rebuild. So I'm going to kind of go through the mechanics of that here, and hopefully it clears up some of the confusion, some of the questions. But here is a Switchcraft 114BX, not very expensive. And what I am doing is I'm utilizing, this is a stereo jack, but the trick of it is utilizing a mono plug on this stereo jack will ground the ring. So in here is a ring and a tip. So I'm going to open up the data sheet here. The tip is on a mono, you'll see here, uh, you know, that's the tip, obviously. That's where the signal is. The rest of this is ground. Now, if you look at a stereo jack, we have the tip, and then there's a ring, that small little ring in there, and, and it is separate from the tip and the ground. So that's, you know, basically left, right signal. You got two signals in here, and then the rest is ground. What I'm doing is if you look, let's see if I can do this. Um, when you have the tip and the uh, the mono and the stereo side by side, the tip of this jack, a stereo jack, will actually touch on the mono plug, the uh, outer grounding, right? And you see, see how that's there? Um, so I'm leveraging that basically taking a mono plug and leveraging that sleeve to ground the power amp section of my deluxe reverb, um, which means that with the speaker load, when I plug in this jack, the power amp section is getting grounded. The signal going to that power amp section is getting grounded. And it basically is a super quiet speaker <laughs> now, but you still do need a speaker load. So one of the questions I received was, well, what if, what if I have, um, you know, do I need a speaker load? The answer is yes, you do need a speaker load. Uh, it doesn't have to be a speaker. You can use like um, a load, like an eight ohm um, fixed resistor at a high voltage or a high wattage rating. Uh, I don't actually, I, I admit, I haven't looked that much into um, how to load this um, without a speaker, but I have a feeling like that uh, along the the right path is to have uh, the equal ohms to the speaker and DC resistance, um, and then a high wattage value so it can take the load. Otherwise, you're going to do bad things on those power tubes and bad things from what I've read. I luckily don't have any bad experiences. Um, knock on wood. Okay, so if you look on the inside of this jack, you're going to see, let's see if I can focus here, the ring, which is that little cent, uh, connector further on the inside, on the side, right? And then you have the tip, which is the closest, right? And according to the data sheet, the tip is considered the spring. So you see the connection for the spring. And then the shunt, which is inside here, that's connected. See, right? There's a little arm that extends out to the tip here. So when there's no jack plugged in, that this is not pressed down and it's up. And that means it's connected. So these two right here are connected. And I'm going to take my digital multimeter and display that. So I'm going to change it over to making a beep when it's connected. Okay. Here's this. Here's that. Guess what? They're connected. But check this out. When I plug in a mono, actually it doesn't matter what I plug in, this now does not touch that. Okay. So this is what I'm doing with the Deluxe Reverb is I'm essentially... When I plug in a, mon uh, a jack of any sorts, but this only works, by the way, uh, with a mono jack or plug, sorry, 
So I'm taking the mono plug in here, and I'm breaking the connection between the tip spring and the tip shunt. Okay? And if you notice on my drawing, that tip shunt then would be connected to the tip spring, and this amp is no different than a standard AB763. Or, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, 763. So that's basically to use basically a thousand times in a row. The connections made here, this 220 ohm resistor or 220K resistor is just part of it. Um, the, the circuit, the AB763 circuit. So that's basically where I think, uh, for me, that's sort of the best place I put it. If you look here, the ring spring is actually doing nothing at when this is out. So the ring spring is is at this time doing nothing. But when I plug in a mono jack, this is where I'm grounding the power amp section, okay? So I'm plugging in a mono jack and this this remember how the distance here? When I plug this in, the ground is hitting the outside here or the sleeve Okay, and that sleeve, because it's a mono jack, is extended to where the ring location is. So here is the ring spring. Guess what? That's grounded. That ground now goes back to the tip shunt, which is not connected to the tip anymore, the tip spring. It's connected over here. And that ground on the sleeve, here's the sleeve, ground, goes back to the power amp section. So here we go. It goes to this coupling cap. In a nutshell, that is how I achieve taking the stereo Switchcraft 114BX and create a uh, preamp output based on this. Um, again, if you do need a speaker load uh, or some type of load if you're just if you're going to have this in a combo. Some folks, uh, if you look at the Alembic, or there's some folks making pedals that is just a preamp section. Um, you don't need the power amp section uh, if you want 100% full time, just a preamp. Uh, look at you know the Grateful Dead community. They have um, I think it's SMS preamp, which is just a rack mount unit and a digital spring reverb. Um, if you just need a dedicated preamp <clears throat> without the power amp section, but hopefully this clears up some of the confusion for some, um, or just elaborates and I can do a better job than my first video on explaining what's going on under the hood. So in a nutshell, the signal is going from the preamp into the tip spring. Again, that's just your tip. And because when I enter in a um, jack, it breaks the connection between the tip spring and the tip shunt, which is that little arm in there, it breaks that connection. And the because of the wiring I've done here, the ring is now connected to the... Uh, tip shunt which is going back into the power amp section it's grounding the signal going to the power amp section um, let me know what you think should I do an, a more elaboration on this elaborate elaboration I don't know I'm on day whatever it is of quarantine my mind is crazy take care guys